Um, this is the 16th of May with Tony Farrell um, in Corby near Larkins Cross. Hmm. Thanks, Tony. Okay, so um, you were a fisherman, so was it? That's right. Well, yeah. all belonged to me, like all my family, like. Okay. We uh, had a. Um, I don't know, four or five generations, I'd say, or maybe more, as far back as I can go anyway. We were from a place called Crosby Row, which is in the parish. Yeah. You know where the civic buildings are built yeah. now? That we lived there, alongside the river. Okay. And we had our own little sort of, how would you say, a harbour there, if you want to call it. We called it the Soy Yard. So well, we, is it? Uh, the Soy Yard, like the, I think that's what they called okay. it. Okay. Like, yeah. Uh, just so I know. It is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And... Um, the situation was that uh, we fished out of it for years, like, but be back years before, like, you know, was there was a great vibrant community there as regards fishing. Okay. Right? They, they fished all the year round. Uh, they made their own nets, their own ropes, uh, their own boats. Okay. One of the boats is out there at the moment. I have it upside down out there. Okay. Interesting. Uh, they were called Gandlers. And... Um, the, it was the O'Farrells that fished in that area there, like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't recall anyone else that fished that from that area, you know, from Crosby Row. But there was a whole lot of other fishermen that fished with the Farrells, if you understand me. Okay. Farrells were the boat owners and that, like, but it was the, whole, the crews, like, you know. Okay. Uh, How, so and we, this, was, this was down River now, do you understand? Okay. It was down towards the estuary. Down towards uh, the mouth, like the Shannon, but it didn't go quite as far, like. But that's the way that we were called the lower fishermen. Okay. Uh, there is another couple of books that have been wrote about the Abbey fishermen, but they were farther yeah. up. They right. were upriver. And. Uh, so you got involved because you've seen four generations. So. Yeah, well, we all fish, like yeah. you know, as kids and that and everything. So that's yet, how you know. got into it. I got into it, but I went a little step farther, like. Okay. I had my own trawler, and, right. I, and I had uh, two trawlers actually. I also um, I studied in Greencastle for my skipper's ticket, which I did. Oh my God! Okay. And uh, where's Greencastle? Sorry, Tony. Greencastle. There, there's a fishery college in Greencastle. Uh, Where is that? Uh, B I M had it, like which is Bordish Kavara, You know, they were they the Irish board custom. They're not doing too much now with the, since we joined the EC, like. Okay. But anyway, um, but getting back to the the, the 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 fishermen in Limerick, like at the time, which are fish with the nets, like for a living, like the fish for salmon mainly, right? Okay. And there was a strand fisherman, which were the people who were across the river, over by St Munchens Church okay. along that area there, and we were on the other side, we were on the south side, okay. right? And the thing about the, we were called the townies, that's what they called us when we used to fish, you know. Okay. And with the townies, it was before output engines and all that crack, we used to carry two, two 14 foot oars and a, and a pair of paddles which were 9 foot each. Oh and a sail. And the reason, the townies fished a lot more of the river than any of the Kona guys or, or the county men because they were all living alongside the river, do you understand? Right. They could come out and have and go back in for their tea, like, you know what yeah. I mean? But when we left on the top of the tide, we had to fish down the whole way and wait for the tide to come back up again, to come back. So we had to fish uh, more extensively and uh, mo uh, a longer area than the rest of them. Do you get me? I do, yeah. You see, the Kuna guy could come out like they only fish one small area and they could go back in and hop in and out because they live alongside of the area, you see? Okay. But we had to go all the way down, like, you know, okay. and come back up with the tide. So how far down would you be going? Well, we went from... Uh, there is an area there called the Stent Light. It's a Stent Light, it's called. That's where we, we, we started. Everyone had to start fishing for salmon there. You couldn't... F it was illegal to fish above that, east of that. Okay. So it was called the stent light. But uh, we, you go down as far as the Ring Moylan. Oh, yeah. Uh, particularly in the salmon season, we always fished on the south side, on the salmon. There would be the spring fish. The salmon would be? Yeah. Okay. And uh, then when the, the, the summer fish had come, like which were the pale, they're called grills, actually, is the proper name for them. 
What is it? Grills? Grills. G-R-O-L-S-C. Grills. They're a summer runner's uh, salmon. Okay. Then we fish the north side and we, you know, uh, but as I said, like, you know, the, 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 the guys from town, like, you know, there was two, there was a family, oh, we were the Farrells on that side, and the, there was a family over in, in the, on the Strand, there was uh, uh, three families over there, one was the Dordans, yeah. uh, and the other one was the Kings, and the other family was uh, Tobins, and they all fished, and, you know, they all lived in that side, but we all fished the same stretch of water, like, you know. Yeah, okay. And um, Tony, you were saying there that you used to make your own nets, ropes, and boats. That's right. So, um, how would you go about that, and what would you have needed to make nets and all that? Well, we had our own wheels for them. I still have the wheels in the workshop. I have a workshop in town, like you have know, you? Okay. I have, where uh, where I've made a few boats already. Right. Okay. And it was the wheel, like you know, that we used to spin the the the, the yarn with it, like you know, and we had what they call a top. You went through it with a top, like it, 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 it formed a rope as you went along, like you know. Right. But um, uh, it's the women used to make the nets. Okay. Uh, uh, there was one f famous one. My grandmother used to make nets. Did she? What was her name? Uh, Annie. Annie. Uh, Annie Farrell was her name, or Annie O'Farrell. And uh, there was another lady. Another lady, Cusick was her name. She she made nets up in Nicholas Street. Which was just up the top of uh, of just up from the yeah. where we lived, and um, the only thing we bought was corks. Okay, what were the corks? The corks were for floating the nets, you know, at the oh, top yeah. of this. Uh, okay. And um, and so you made your own. There were the ropes, and you made the nets, and for boats. The then? boats, yeah. And you made all this in your workshop. Yes, well, not in the workshop I have now, but there was a, a workshop we had originally done by this big buildings. Okay. The remains of it are still there, actually. If is you ever it? Want. Where yeah. about is it? It's a uh, old. It's out in the yard of the civic yeah. buildings. Okay. You know. That's where it was, right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And did you meet? You obviously made boats for, like, Other, for Limerick yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Okay. There was two boat builders, two main boat builders. One was the O'Farrells and the other one was the Dordans. Okay. The Dordans built them across the other side of the river, like, you know. Right. But they were the two main... Uh, and this was full-time for you, obviously, was it, Tony? Well, it was full-time in, in, for, for me. For me, it wasn't, like, you know. We had... Uh, when I was on a boat, we, were, we started fishing in the 50s. Okay. And um, by that time, then, they used, to, they used to fish for flat fish as well during the... During mm -hmm. the the winter, okay, and used to go right up to Christmas, and used to sell the flat fish. The women used to sell the flat. They were called fluke or flounder. Yeah, I've heard of the uh, ones. They, they used to sell them in Nicholas Street. There's been market there in Nicholas Street, two and three times a week, like you know. Okay. But when the fifties came along, like you know, that sort of died off, you know. The fifties are sort of dying down. No, it's uh, the the winter fishing started dying Sorry. off. Sorry. Okay. So I I left. I wanted to go up full time. So I went. That's when I went on the trawlers. Okay. And what did you do with the trawlers then? Well, I was trawling, like you know, at sea, you yeah. know. And uh, then, as I said, I went for my skipper's ticket, and uh, I bought my own trawler in uh, the seventies, the first one. And where would you go trawling? Sorry? I trawled the Lower Shannon. Okay. Yeah, that down by. In, that was in the nineteen seventies, right? Yeah. You started in the Shannon. Okay. Uh, that would be around uh, 72 or 3. Okay. I did that for four years and anyway. after that then I sold her. Yeah. I sold the boat and I went back trawling at, uh, in the winter time, like, you know. Uh -huh. uh, I went back trawling and, uh, at sea. And then in the 80s I opened a fish shop. Okay. <laughs> uh, Arvold Seafoods it was called. What is it? Arvold, A-R-V-O-D-E. Arvold Seafoods. Okay. And uh, that was, um, that went for a, a good couple of years. It was it was mm -hmm. directly opposite the Franciscan Church, actually, in Limerick. Okay. In Henry Street. And uh, and then we diversified. We started cooking it. Oh, really? Okay. 
So I opened the seafood bar there. You did not, did you? Mm, and it was very, uh, very popular. Dress crab and all that kind of carry on. And what was the name of that place? Uh, that was our board. But then our when, when, we, when we diversified, we opened a, 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 a chipper, a fish and chipper there, and, and it was called the lobster pot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very so, uh, good. That went for a good many years, like, okay. you know. That when we were nearly there. We were in that premises for nearly 30 years, you know. 30 years. And um, were you still fishing? I was, yeah. The whole time? Okay. Yeah. So you caught all the fish, I'm assuming, for the... Well, not all the fish, like, but most of the fish. You couldn't keep catch all of it, like, right, you know. Okay. Sometimes you get a certain species of fish that you would you'd sell to the, the local fishmongers mm -hmm. and that, like, you know. Okay. But I was landing into... Um, I was fishing over Carrigal Holt, which is the on the Shannon, the lower yeah. Shannon, and I was I was landing in there to the co-op. Okay. Yeah, but well the co-op is gone now, like you know. Is this? Yeah. yeah. The fishing sort of. Well, the EC made a complete. Hems of the whole lot. What happened there, Tony? Tell me well, about that. when they, when they joined the EC, should they gave seventy five percent of the fishing uh, of the west coast away. Right. Yeah, and that's happening this very day now, like you know. They're, we don't own it anymore, like, you know. Okay, so... It's the EC, like, the, yeah. the, is, we're, we're so-called Europeans now. But they gave it away just so to... So, is it you, you're... Do you think the fishing declined here in Ireland because of that? Well, there's no doubt in my mind, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we weren't allowed to catch... We were only allowed 25% of it, like, you know. Right, okay. And I got out then, like, I sold that my last trawler, I sold that and... Okay. You could say semi-retired after that. Right, mm. okay. Do you think that's the main reason, so, that the fishing declined here? Doesn't do, Can you think of anything else that may have led to the decline? Yeah, but then, on, oh, the, then recently, like, you know, they, they took uh, <coughs> they took all the fishing rights away from the fishermen on the river. What do you mean by that? They took, the, you're not allowed to fish for salmon on the river anymore. Is that for conservation or...? Yeah, well, they said it was, like, you know, it didn't seem to make much difference, like, you know. Yeah. They're off it now about 15, 15 years. Are and they? Well, we were, we were told we, that was it. I think the biggest compensation that was, that was uh, handed out was about 13,000 or something like that. Okay. 13, like. That's nothing. It's just not... Crazy. Didn't make any much difference anyway, so... And, that um, killed it entirely then. God, it would do, yeah. Mm. People then look for work. Um, Tony, what is the salmon, what's the fishing season? Well, the fishing season used to, uh, when we used to fish for salmon, like that would be the spring fish, that would start on the 1st of February. Salmon, so spring fish, 1st of February, yeah. And that would go on then up to around, we say, uh, it would be, be spring fish coming around maybe April, up to the end of April. Okay. And then about from the middle of May on, you start, to, the summer run would come on, which would be the grills. Okay. And that finished then on the 19th of July. We had to come off the river then on the 19th of July, that was it. Okay. You weren't allowed to fish anymore. Okay. But, uh, and there was nothing then in the winter time? No, that there was, was nothing in the winter time. That's why I went... I, I, I went trawling in the winter time. Okay, and you went down the Shannon then for yeah. around for dinner? I don't think anyone else did it in, 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 uh, in the fishing community that we were in, like, you know. Right. I don't think anyone else uh, went to sea, in other words, like, yeah. fish the winter, you know. Right. It was a, ha a part-time job then, like, you know. And they always had a, a bit... They'd have work, like, they go working for the winter and that, and in their holidays they go down to fish for salmon. Okay. That's what he went as far as, like, you know. Okay. There was no real full-time fisherman there, like. Right. Apart from myself, I think. Okay. And how yeah. long were you gone for in the trawlers when you used to go? Uh, It'd hardly be a day, really. Oh, no, well, I fish for, we fish for our car, out of uh, Castleton, where we fish for tuna. Right. Yeah, and we it was a... Uh, 550 miles southwest of the Fastnet. And off the Azores, you have the Azores, uh, mm. the, uh, about 100 miles west of the Azores. We fished on the Gulf Stream. Oh my God, okay. Mm. We were um, five days steaming down there, two days fishing, and five days steaming back. Oh, okay, so you were going to win. 
uh, we used to get 2,000 tuna. And then we come back, unload them, and head back down again, like, you know. Okay. Mm. And where was the tuna going, Tony? Um, mainly to Spain. Okay. Yeah. So well, we, we landed, we didn't, we didn't land in Spain, we landed in, back in Castletown Bear through the co-op. And then the co-op exported them to Spain, like, you know. Okay. Yeah. And John West got a lot of them as well, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And um, what were the rules and regulations for fishing, Tony? You mentioned there you were restricted from the 19th of July. So 19th of July, it stopped. Right. You weren't allowed to fish in until the following February. Right, okay. And what uh, happens? How, who would be there to catch you or how would you...? Well, there'd be bailiffs on the river, like, you know. Right, and yeah. how often would they be up and down? Oh, they'd be up and down quite regularly. Okay. They'd be checking the length of your net as well. You were only allowed 200 yards. Right. Well, we used to carry a tail, what we call a tail. Okay. That'd be about another maybe 100 yards, maybe 50 or 60 yards. And when they wouldn't be around, then we'd just tie it on to the end and we'd be fishing more, and you know, get yeah, cover yeah, yeah. more ground. like. And what kind of fishing did you do? That was for uh, salmon. That, and yeah. was there a name for this type of fishing? Yeah, drifting. Just drift, drifting, drift fishing. Drift netting, yeah. Okay. And what would happen then if the bailiff, would you get fined or? Oh, you would, yeah. Uh, Can you remember what they were, the fines? Well, the fines were, I, I was fined once around a five or something that I was oh, caught. Small. Yeah. Right, but it wasn't, okay. wasn't too small in the 50s, like. In the 50s, right, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. And what were you doing, Tony, that you got caught? Or do you want to I was poaching on, down by the... By the dock, right? Okay. Near the <laughs> yeah. Do you want? Is that okay? Oh yeah. yeah. So it's all gone now, anyway. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. No. It's still, yeah. Right. Okay. And um, for licenses, Tony, um, what did you do to get a license? How did well, you know about that? The licenses were in the families, down through the right. through the through the, you know, but you had to apply for a license every year. Okay. You know. That was the... Each family had to? Yeah. And then could anyone in that family fish with that license? Yes, you could fish with that license, yeah. Okay, so how did you get... But only one boat fish for that license, right. you know, but you could, you could have different crews fishing it all I 24 you. hours, you know. And how would you go about getting one of those licenses? Well, as I said, like, it was a tradition in our family. Mm -hmm. We were going back into the 1800s, so what it should like. Okay. And uh, the it was just handed down from father to son, that type of thing, like you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And did you have to apply anywhere, or pay you for the to, license? You had to apply to the ESP. Right. It was the ESP that issued the license. Yeah. And did they cost much money? Oh, I don't know. Was it around at the time? Was it about twelve, fourteen quid around that time? You know. Right. Went up in later years, like you know, but it's oh, yeah, yeah. But that's what we used to pay around that time, which right, was okay. around the seventies, you know, yeah, in the sixties or seventies. Okay, and um, were there many women involved? Uh, not really. It was a there was no women like involved on the well, not there was. Um, there was one guy actually who lived on the, on an island down there called Green's Island. Okay. And he was uh, he had an aunt. He lived with an aunt there, and her name was Mary Green. She was the only woman that I knew of that fished. Right. And she used to fish with him, like you know. Okay. But it was very hard work, like you know. Sounds. So, well, when you were saying about carrying the oars and stuff, that yeah. sounds like tough. So. Um, Women did a lot of work, like ashore, like the salt fish and the made nets, and you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, and but making the boats, Tony. How did you go about that? Where did you source? Well, we made the boats through. Uh, there, was, uh, there was timber used to come into the dock. There was uh, timber boats that were called, and there was a uh, there was a. Um, uh, 
quite deal it was called, but he was down from Archangel in, right. in Russia. He used to come in. McMahon used to bring it in, oh, the yeah, timber yeah, merchant. The timber. And uh, we nice. could only pick out the planks like for it that we had, like, you know. Right. And what kind of timber did you say that would be? Uh, white deal or spruce. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was. Yeah. And uh, we get them cut like uh, t to the size we want, and then we shape them ourselves, like you know, and make the boat. Okay, cut the size. Right. And how would you go about making the boat? Then I just saw one outside the window. And um, how would you go about making? Well, that boat there, no, that's a Korok. Right. That one. That's a Korok design. I built that. Well, it was a friend of mine. We built both two of them actually. He has one. I have the other one. Right. But I have a boat here, which is the Gandalf. Okay. That type oh of boat. Oh my god, okay. Yeah. That was a... Uh, and you made those? Yeah, I made that one, yeah. How do you, but how? How would you make that? Well, you do the floor first, and then you build right. up the sides. Right. And then you put in ribs into it, and that, you know. And yeah. You build it like, you know. And how long would one of them take to make? Well, you'd make that in a boat, maybe, if you were... Well, if you were working away and not normally you'd make it in the boat, you'd have it on the water in the boat. Five or six weeks. Right, okay. And uh, you'd have it ready for fishing, you know. And are they all painted different colours, Tony? Was no, there no, they're all that type of battleship grey yeah. and black. Right, okay. Usually, like, you know. Okay. That boat is called a Gandalf. Yeah. And uh, they, they were the main uh, boats that were... Uh, I, I try to get into history about those boats and I try to study them, like, you know, where they, how they originated on the river. You see, that boat can go on mud. There's a lot of mud in the river and they can slide right. in the mud, you know. Okay. And I put it back to the, back as far as the Vikings, that boat. Do you? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind, I think. Why do you think they, that? They built it. Well, it was a utility boat for them that they built for the Shannon. See, when they came up the Shannon originally, they founded Limerick, you know that, didn't you, the yeah. Vikings? But when they came up originally, like, you know, well, the tide went out and they had keel bottom boats. In other words, they had a kind of a keel underneath yeah. and they get stuck in the mud. I and should all the guys ashore, like, be picking them off, like, you know, because right. they, cause they couldn't jump out. Like, it wasn't like it, uh, like, when they, when they arrived in places like Waterford in Dublin, they could jump out onto the sand. And that was, yeah. Which and they could run along it. But when they could jump out in the river and the... They go up to the other mud lake. Yeah, okay. So I reckon they built that boat as a far the Shannon. Because uh, to make it easy. The, the Shannon was the only means of when they came up from the mouth of the Shannon they travelled up like, you know, I mean they sacked Clan McNoise, which is well up the Shannon. But those boats they had like, you know, they could pick them up. Okay. And bring them across the field. Right. And go on to the next lot. You know, when there's all these different locks and falls, like, you know. Right, okay. That's a good theory, yeah. So, uh, this is my theory. Yeah, but it's good. Yeah. yeah. And they're uh, not too heavy, are they? Or how big are these, Tony, these boats? Well, that boat now was 21 foot. Right. But the, 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 the three-man boat, which was a three-man boat, was which was used, the town is used a three-man boat. The reason is because they were travelled so far. You know, they fished a longer stretch than anyone else in the river. Right. And uh, they'd be 23 feet. 23 feet, okay. 23 feet, yeah. And the, the 21 foot one, this one is a two person boat? Well, the 18 foot ones were built after. 20 foot, like, well, uh, 21 foot is kind of in the middle, like, you know. Right. But it, there was normally 18 foots were, were built after for, for two men to fish. For two men. Yeah. And more That's what with an open engine, then, you see. Say again. We had our port engines then. Oh, okay. So you could you could uh, you could travel down. You could travel home farther. You could go a lot farther. Like we didn't have, need a sail. Or you didn't need two big oars to pull. You know. Yeah. Okay. So you used to fish two men instead of three. And when did the engine come in? Sorry, all the questions. The engines come in around the uh, late fifties. Late fifties. Okay. First engines used were uh, an engine called the Seagull. Okay. Hmm. Then after that, the Johnsons, American ones, come in. That like right. you know. Okay, and um, um, before that, then you'd put on the sail or whatever, and obviously, would you be going with the tide? Then you'd work it with the tide. You'd have to go down with the tide. Yeah. 
So when you're coming home then, like, you know, you might get your, what they call your high water around Kuna. Right. Well, then if there was a good breeze of wind, like you'd have a sail, they'd only sail with a fair wind. In other words, the wind behind them. Yep. They don't tack like a normal, you can't, because they're a flat bottom, you see. Right. And they skitter. So, you know, there's no keel. Yep. So you can't tackle them. So you have to have a wind behind you with them. Right, okay. Of course, if you had a wind coming down from them, it's like you were a snooker, like you had to pull <laughs> <Yeah>. up again. <laughs> That's very good. You had to pull up then. Oh, but the good. outboard engine is done away with all the sail, like you just yeah. put on your outboard engine, you could that's it then. either, no matter what way the tide came, like I don't think. And would they go into very deep water, then these, they'd be fine, but you wouldn't take them out too far to sea, would you? No, no, we wouldn't go to sea without that no, boat, like that, that boat now was designed for sea, because it's a Kurok, right, okay. the blue one. Right. Uh, I do a lot of fishing, sea fishing with her, actually. Do you? I do, yeah. Okay. Mm. And you can go up by yourself in this and... Yeah, well, I, I've not always one person with yeah. you, like, yeah. you never go out on your own, it's yeah, too dangerous. Yeah, thank you. No matter, no, matter what, no matter what kind of boat you have. Yeah, okay. Yeah, some people do, like, but I think it's... It's, it's stupid. It. Yeah, it's something happens, God forbid. Um, speaking of that, was there any accidents that you remember? Well, there was, yeah, there was... Uh, there was one lad, a, c a corner lad, he went down, they went down and they sold their fish at Dirty Nellies, you know, no Dirty yeah, Nellies? Yeah, I do. Yeah, well, there was a guy called uh, Roger Pollard owned the lad orig originally, and he used to buy salmon. Okay. He had a buyer's license and he used to sell it. I sold salmon to him as well. And he used to, get, he used to use them, he used to smoke them. That's what he wanted them for, smoking, like for the restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, for the, and, and, and fresh as well. Well, these two lads went down one time. There was one lad, I think his name was Hickey was his name. That was his name, actually, and he had a few drinks in Dirty Nettie's and they came out on the boat. Right. And he was trying to stop the engine and he fell out over the boat on him and he got drowned. Okay. There was one saved that right. A guy was with him called Munchen. And uh, that was the only accident. They were a very safe boat, like, you know. And okay. And very safe for an est for the estuary. I never remember anyone really. Uh, that's the only one I uh, I can remember. And I'm yeah. thirty years on the river now. You know, thirty years. Yeah, okay. more than thirty years. Am I talking right. about? Since the fifties. How long ago was that? Oh God, over thirty years. So fifty years. Ago. <laughs> 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 A long, long time. Okay. But, but um. And you just said, sorry, go on. There's, that's the only accident I can remember of. Okay, which is yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. there's not many, thank God. Mm. Um, you just mentioned there a buyer's license. Was there many different types of licenses, Tony? A buyer's license? Yeah. Well, a buyer's license, you have to have a buyer's license to buy fish. You, see, you have to have one at the moment as well, like, right, if you want okay. to. You know? Okay. Um, and what was your license called, did you say? Well, the license I had was, um, I had a, a tonnage. It was tonnage for the trawler you had. That was your license, you know. Right. You could only, uh, it was whatever capacity you could fish, in other words, the bigger your trawler, the bigger tonnage you had, like right. you could go farther and fish for more, like, you know. Well, the last trawler I had was a 60 footer. Right. And uh, there was a license in her, you had it painted on your, uh, painted on the, the side of the board, G57, then. L63 and all that carry on, you know, right. so they know who you are. Okay. You know, when you be out there fishing. Right. But um, uh, but a buyer's license is different. Like, I think anyone can get a, a fish buyer's license if they want to uh, buy fish commercially. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, apply, you, can, you apply to uh, BIM for it. Right. Board yeah. And was there any other types of licenses? If you were to go out in the gondola, what kind of license would you need? Well, you had uh, your fishing license with just, that. Just the fishing license, yeah. that was called. Yeah. That was the one you fish with, like, with the nets. Right, okay. But you could go where you like it or, like, you know. Say it. It was more of a chariot for us, for our family. Yeah. We used to go off them at this, when the fishing would be finished. We'd go off down for picnics down the river and everything else, you know. Okay. You know. And where would you go for picnics? We'll go down to a place, Greens Island. Don't have that'd be down the motor, down by Bunratty. 
Okay. And there's another place called K Island and you know. Yeah. You just go down the boat. Just go down the boat. We, we, we did all our things in the boat. We'd often come up river in the boat as well. Okay. Up to Thomas's Island, which is not too. It's only you can see it from here, actually, from my house now, yeah. across there. And uh, okay. picnics again, just for the summer, you know. Yeah, that's, we that's the for boat your family, there. so yeah, all that. Yeah. And food on the boat when you used to go out before, if you were going out for a few days, would it be, or what did you do for food then? Well, we carry with us. You like, carry with Yeah, we food. had what they call a grub box. Right. Yeah, and we have to, we just have to carry fresh water as well. The, oh, yeah. Fresh water, no, I have one. There was one of those there. Yeah, see those there? Them little jars. What are we looking at? Oh my god, I remember those. Okay. We used to carry the fresh water. An earthenware jar. Earthenware yeah. jar. We used to carry the fresh water in that. Okay. <coughs> and how long did you say you'd be gone for if you went down on the boat? Well, on the salmon, like we go up, we go down on the tide and come back, like you'd be talking about 12 hours, 12 hours, you know. Okay. But in the trawlers, like, you'll be off and off for three or four days, I can. And as I said, you'll be... Well, ten days we were fishing farther down, like, with, for tuna, but I was fishing another boat then, like, it wasn't my own boat, like. Okay, very good. Mm. Um, and what kind of food would you take with you, Tony? If oh, you're the best to grub. Yeah. You would have steak. Would you? Oh, you would have the best of steak and spuds and vegetables and all that crack in the trawlers. Right. And you'd have fresh fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. And if you went in the gondola, what would you? Well, in the gondola, we'd only have a little grub box. We we'd bring a uh, uh, sandwiches and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. The only thing we do is uh, we used to have what they call a fire bucket. Right. It was a bucket with a uh, with holes punched in it, like you know, like a grate. Right. And then we'd fill the bucket with um, with earth halfway. And then we'd light a fire on the top of it, you understand? Right, okay. And we'd have our pot or, or kettle beyond that then. That's how we used to cook, like, you know, what the... It's very good. It's it was nice. the best thing to use because if you were bringing an old Primus lamp or uh, one of these little gas lamps to keep blowing out in the wind, like, you know. Right. But a fire bucket used to get hotter with the, with the wind, like, blowing it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we used to have, the fire bucket. It's really good, okay. Mm. And, um... Um, had you nicknames or anything? Loads of nicknames. Okay. I could tell you we had one. I fished with a guy like who he, uh, my father had my brother fishing with him. But I fished with two guys like, you know. Right. One was called Nowlers. Nowlers used to call him. Right. N-O-W-L-E-R-S. That's the only way I could say it. Nowlers, yeah. Uh, and his brother was, uh, his name was Paddy Carroll, his brother's name, we used to call it Storm, we called him. Okay. Because he was a real sea dog, you know. Was he? <laughs> <laughs> and he was in the First World War, actually. He was in the Dardanelles, if, uh, you might have heard no, of it. No, I haven't, no. Uh, well, that was um, Mr. Mister Churchill's The Battle, I'd call it. It's here in the First World War down in the Gallipoli. Okay. And uh, he, he came out of the Dardanelles. They were, they were taking, they were like, sitting ducks down there but that's what we used to call him uh, old storm you know right and he had all old sayings and that then there was another crowd across <laughs> across <laughs> across in the on the strand side okay one guy was called blackie dorn what is the call him he used to build the boats and they called his son blackie after when he went when he died like you know okay and then there was um there was a guy called um, Timmy Tobin was his name, and we used to call him the Dead Egg. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yes. And what was your nickname? Well, I didn't have any nickname. Didn't give me one? no. Okay. Didn't the old timers had all these. Like, right. mind you, if I did have a nickname, then why is it behind my back? <laughs> 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 you no. Know? Yeah. Okay. Well, there was a name that was called one time, I remember, Brooks. Right. Young Brooks. And the reason why that was, uh, I met, there must be an old guy, Tom Kane. He, li he, he fished out of uh, Mungret. And I can remember we pulled up alongside, you'd, be, you'd pull up alongside one another waiting for your drift, like, you know. Mm. And he, he said to my father, I was fishing with my father at the time, and he said, I was only about 12. And he said, is that young Brooks? 
And I couldn't understand why you said that, like. Yeah. But my great grandmother's name was Aggie Brooks. Oh, yeah. And it was all handed down through mm. word of mouth, you know. And that's that's, that's the name they gave me yeah. then, Brooks. That's lovely, though. Mm. That's nice memory as well. Yeah. Um, when you just say used to pull up beside you for drifting, how did you work that? How did you. You had different stations where you went, and when you went off that drift, then you could go on. The next guy would go on, like, you understand what I mean? Take yeah. it in turns. Yeah. Okay. And who allocated the station C? Well, it just handed down like for years and years, yeah. like you know, you just you just followed the rules. Because so if you didn't follow the rules, everyone would be fighting with one another. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Because you see, the fish were coming up all the time. Right. And if you were too near a guy, you'd be catching the fish before they got to his net. So you had to give enough of space. You see. So it was kind of respect as well. Yeah, it was. Uh, and did you get people that used to oh, respect would, of course, others? Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Would, yeah. Um, what used to you wear, Tony? Wear? Mm. Well, we have oil skins, like. Ice skins. Oil skins. Oil skins. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And rubber boots. Mm. And that's all you'd need, is it? That's all you'd need, like. And where would you get this, this stuff, then? The oil, the oil skins. Mm -hmm. And you'd buy them. Uh, you could, you, you'd get them from the locally, or you could get them from the manufacturers of the nets. We bought nets after, like you know, we didn't, uh, when the nylon nets came in. Yeah. We got them from uh, from the suppliers, like one club called Gundry. They were called. Right. We used to get the nets from them, and uh, you you could order oil skins for them or anything else you wanted, like you know. And so and it's like it was, it was easy to come across them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. Um, um, there was another lady that um, she wanted to know had anyone ever heard of a pollock. A what? A pollock. A pollock, yeah. Yeah. Pollock is a, a sea fish. Right. Yeah. But it's not like it's, oh, it's, sorry, pollen. A pollen. A pollen. Yeah. P o l l a n. You hadn't heard of it, no. A pollen. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll she was that. trying to find out more about this particular fish, but yeah, yeah. So some people heard of it, others haven't. No, no, I would never heard of a pollen, like you okay. know. Okay. But that might be a local name for a type of fish, you know. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, okay. because down in uh, Kinvara, they love pollock. Pollock is a very uh, uh, the fish is very uh, plentiful, you know. Right. But they don't call them pollock. Right. They call them bollock. <laughs> B. That's right. As you know, so you wouldn't know what to be on about right. making this, you yeah. see? Yeah. And uh, okay. maybe that's what she, that might be some name she has for a. For something. For a herring or a mackerel or something like, you know. Okay. Mm. Right, Tony, thank you. Okay. I can't think of anything else to ask you. Pardon? I can't think of anything else <laughs> no. to ask you. But I mean, as I said, like, you know, you can always come back later on if you want yeah, to check thanks. anything out. That'd yeah. be brilliant. Thanks yeah. very much for that. No problem. Yeah, yeah. and thanks. Do you have my number anyway? I do, Tony. Thanks yeah, a million. Yeah. yeah. I'll stop these, so. All right.